<coughs> new gun video. <coughs> the GI model, Springfield, 1911. Oh man, I was eating that fucking pepper jack cheese. That shit's hot. Uh, yeah, the YouTube mail is still fucked up. What the fuck is wrong with that man? Are they that stupid? You got, they have to know that there's something wrong. They just don't give a shit, I guess. Or I guess we have to wait till they're uh, doing maintenance again to fix it. <sighs> what a bunch of scumbags. It's just, you know, I shouldn't say scumbags, but you know what? Come on, man. What's it been, three fucking days now? What's the problem? Springfield, 1911, A1, the original, 1911, World War One sidearm, World War Two sidearm, what can I say, the design lasts to this day, damn it, <clears throat> it's still going on man, 1911, number one handgun according to uh, American Rifleman program, program. Uh, know what I was thinking about doing? I don't know if I should do it. Uh, right here on the barrel. Man, that's dry. I gotta take it apart and lube it up. Right here on the top of the barrel, I was thinking about getting a Dremel with a buffer and steel that flits, steel polish, and taking the, taking the paint. That's not even bluing. I don't know what the fuck. It's like paint. Taking that color off and making it stainless steel. What do you think? You think I should do that? I think it'll be fucking sweet looking. I love 1911s that are like dark and then they have the stainless steel here. I just like how it looks. I like that look. I know this is a military thing, so this is for camouflage. So, that, you know, the sun hits it, it don't shine. That's what it's for. But I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, in, a, in a, that situation. And I know... <clears throat> You shouldn't do anything to a collector's gun, but I really would like to do that. But I don't know how it's going to come out. What if it don't come out good, you know? I don't know. But I would leave this, the barrel, just all the same color, just do this part of the barrel that's exposed. Uh, take off the uh, the color and make it, you know, make it stainless steel. But I don't even know if it's stainless steel. That's the only thing. It might just be steel. And if that's the case, you don't want to do that. Or, I can order a stainless steel barrel for this gun. But, if I do that, then this will be stainless steel. And that will kind of look funny. Unless I get the uh, bushing, a stainless steel bushing with a stainless steel barrel. And then it will look pretty cool. I don't know. Or just buy another 1911 with that stainless steel look to it. That's a lot of money though. Uh, this is the original 1911. That's why the sights, as you can see. Let me do a safety check because I don't want people saying I'm unsafe. I haven't heard that one yet. I'm just waiting. I'm sure that's next. Okay. Now you see what I just did? Let me do that over and show you the right way to do it. I'm just being an asshole. This is the right way. That's the wrong way to do it. This is the right way to do it. When you're doing a safety check on a gun, you want to get the magazine out. It's clear. That is a Kim Pro mag because the mag that comes with this sucks cock. Sorry, if there's any girls watching. Uh, what you want to do is pull the hammer back first and then push this back. It's just a lot smoother, a lot easier. Because if you don't, you got to push the hammer back with the slide and it makes it harder to do it. Just be careful. Okay, I'm doing a visual check. There's nothing in the gun. Nothing in there. This is one of my favorite 1911s. I love this gun. I'm going to dry fire it because you can. I notice I still hold it in the safe direction. Not because I'm being ridiculous. Because it's I just try to keep myself in good habits for safety. I hear a lot of gun accidents going on out there. Machining is pretty good. This line going down here, 
has a little curve in it, just a little. But it's cool. It's a rough gun. And uh, now, as you can see, it's a 45. And if you look at the sights on it, they're very low profile sights. Uh, I guess that's for, you know, when you're pulling out of your holster, you don't get hooked on anything. They're very hard sights to use. They are. Uh, this is more, I think it, this gun's more designed for a close situation where you really don't even need the sights, kind of just point and shoot. Um, <clears throat> the original uh, 1911, which it is, as you can see, uh, it's, see the beaver tail? How it looks, it's real skinny. Doesn't stick out much. The newer ones are come out further and they're, they're rounder and everything. Uh, it doesn't have it does it only has one thumb safety on this side. Okay. It's real easy to disassemble this pistol because there's no modern gadgets on it. Uh, everything comes right out the fire. Uh, the, what the, the only thing is. When you take the firing pin out of this one, it doesn't have that little, like a newer 1911, you push this little button and then the firing pin just pops out a little bit and then you can take it out. This one, when you pull, if you know how to take the firing pin out, if you don't, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. But this one, when you pull the latch up to release, to let the pin out, that pin will shoot like a bullet right across the room. So you got to make sure you... When you pull a latch up, you put your thumb in front of it, because it's a, you know it's the old-fashioned model. It's supposed to be, you know, mil spec. It's supposed to be the exact replica of it. So, um, yes, I, I've taken this completely apart. I've taken the fire pin out. I, I've taken the extractor out. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, the ejection port is kind of higher and a little smaller than your uh, modern 1911. And most of your modern 1911s, the ejection port right in this corner is is sanded down on an angle, and it, it's it's called flared, a flared out ejection port. Right, this part right here is flared out flat. It just gives the brass more room to get out of the way, and uh, prevents malfunction. But I gotta tell you, this fucking gun, I had no feeding problems with it. I had no no ejection problems with it and it's 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 extremely accurate it's hard to aim it because of the sights but if you take your time with it and you shoot carefully with it yeah you could put a nice group together with this pistol um, what I love most about this gun is the action on it it's really smooth I mean the action is like It's just so easy to pull. It ain't real hard to pull back. You know what I mean? So, I like that too. The magazine release works great. Uh, it's, just, it's just my favorite 1911. This is a full-size government model. It's the biggest one. It comes out. Now, the different size of 1911s is the length of the slide. You have this size of government. Then you'll have a commander, which will go in a little bit more. Then you'll have an officer size, which will go in a little bit more. Then they have a little defender size, which will go in a little bit more. And the officer size and the defender size, this starts coming up too. You'll, you'll lose a you lose a round. If I show you my Kimber, uh, the frame where you wrap your hand, the grip is not full size anymore. But the commander size and up is a full size frame under the commander and down. The frame gets smaller and the muzzle gets smaller, both. Uh, the mag release works beautiful. It comes out, it doesn't, you know, it goes in real nice. Uh, I have a modern, I do have a modern uh, magazine in it. But that's it, it's all I could say about the Springfield Armory 1911 mil spec. I love it. For $550, it's a fantastic gun for $550.